So I did an exhaustive search of the New Testament to find out what the roles and duties and responsibilities are of a pastor. So I have an exhaustive list here. I want to share it with you right now. Here it is. There is a push to minimize the importance and the role and function of a pastor. The question is, why? One of the biggest problems that we have in our church today is the fact that pastors are not living up to their roles and their responsibilities. There's a natural pushback to state that our view of pastor is incorrect. Whether women should be pastors or that pastors should conduct themselves a certain way or their free use of their own interpretation, not adhering to the text of the Bible, that's an issue because many pastors are just simply not biblical pastors. Pastors have no authority over you. Why do you think they do? It's not because of the Bible. When we go to scripture and we look at the New Testament epistles, we only see the word pastor once in Ephesians chapter four. Do we see any list of qualifications? No. Do we see any list of duties? No. Do we see any authority? No. We think this because of what happened during the Reformation. Martin Luther and John Calvin created a king in the church and named them pastor. Now, I don't know this gentleman. His name is Matt Millen. I'm not familiar with him, although I've seen a few of his videos. Because I can't get into his heart to determine why he's doing so, I can only say that the danger in what he's doing so is profound. Why is that? Well, first of all, let me just say this. Everything, and I literally mean with all due respect to him, everything that he said about a pastor is incorrect. First of all, uh, when he says that the word pastor is only found once in the Bible, the truth be told, the term pastor like every other English word, none of those are actually found in the original text, but the term pastor, how we use it, actually is. The concept of pastor certainly is. As a matter of fact, it's used interchangeably with a few other words, and so we're going to go ahead and look at that. But as I said, just about every single English word that we would use, none of those words are in the Bible. Why? Because no one in the Bible spoke English. And so when we use the word pastor and say that that word is not found in the Bible, only found once, that is a gross error. Going to the passage that he spoke of, Ephesians 4, 11, it says that he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastor teachers. Or we would look at this word pastor. And by the way, this office is an office that is get or that was given. The question is, was this office maintained and carried out? And whether it was carried forward or it was just for that time, who fulfilled this role as pastor teacher or shepherd teacher. And the reason why I say shepherd teacher is because if we go back and look at the passage, this word pastor is from the Greek word poimenos. This Greek word poimenos means to shepherd, a shepherd. That's what it is. The noun is a shepherd. Now, the reason why a person would be in error if they say that this is only found one time in the scripture is because there are other passages that speak about a shepherd, either as a noun or as a verb. Many of you, although you may not be familiar with the Greek, are familiar with the first time that it's used of a man to do so, and that is when Jesus is speaking to Peter. This is after Peter obviously was repentant and broken because he has denied Jesus three times, and so when Jesus speaks to him, he asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? And so let's go to John 21. Let's start in verse 16. After he asked the first time, he tells him to tend to my sheep, and then verse 16, Jesus said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know that I love you. And so what is Jesus' response? Jesus says to shepherd my sheep. And what is the word for shepherd? Pomine, which is a verb meaning to shepherd. And so we see the same use of this word, pomenos, or in this case, the verb to shepherd. We see Jesus telling Peter to do the very same thing. And we see Peter reiterating this in 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to see another word that's also synonymous with pastor, and that is this word elder. Peter in 1 Peter 5 says, therefore, I exhort the elders and look at the term for elders. It's the Greek word for presbyteros, which is presbyter or elder. He says, therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder. So Peter also is an elder, the very same Peter that Jesus tells to shepherd the flock. And this word shepherd is also there in Ephesians. So the shepherd should be a shepherd teacher. We understand what a shepherd does. That is the one that gathers, protects, and keeps. So he says, shepherd the flock. Now here he says, uh, as your fellow el elder, Peter says, 
and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. What does he tell the elders to do? Well, he tells them to do what Jesus tells him to do. He tells the elders in verse two to shepherd the flock of God among you. And notice what he also says, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God. And he says, don't do so for sordid gain. Well, he, the, this gentleman stated also that there is no authority that has been given to these elders or to these shepherds, to these pastors. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. But remember, this term elder is clearly biblical. As a matter of fact, we see the qualifications of an elder. If we go to Titus chapter one, verse five, Paul is training Timothy as well as Titus, who are also elders to go and plant churches and to appoint elders. How do we know so? Because look what he says in First Titus 5, I'm sorry, in Titus 1, chapter 5, he says, for this reason, I left you in Crete that you would set in order what remains. And look what he says, to appoint elders. What's the word that's used there? The very same word that was used by Peter, presbyteros, which is the presbyter or elders in every city as I directed you. So we have an elder planting churches, directing and appointing other elders to oversee these churches, these elders who are supposed to do what? What did Peter say the elders are supposed to do? To shepherd the flock. What did Paul say was given? Shepherd teachers. So these shepherds are given by God. Paul is directing Timothy, and, and I'm sorry, in this case, Titus, to appoint elders in every city as I directed you, namely, if a man is above reproach, the husband of one wife. And so here he's giving the actual qualifications of these elders. So already we see a couple things. We see the word shepherd pastor used interchangeably with the word elder. Now there's an also another term that's also used synonymously with the term elder, just as shepherd is. If we continue verse six, namely, if any man is above reproach, the, the husband of one wife, having children who, do, who believe, not accused of dispensation or rebellion. And look what he says, for the overseer must be above reproach. Well, he just stated that the elder must be above reproach. So too must the overseer. Why is that? Because those two terms are used interchangeably. And I want you to notice what the term for overseer is in the Greek. The term for overseer in the Greek is the Greek word episkopos. Where have we seen this word before? Well, when Paul gives Timothy the qualifications of an overseer or an elder, we're going to find out in 1 Timothy Chapter three, verse one, he says that uh, it is a trustworthy statement if any person or any man aspires to the office of an overseer. What's this word for overseer? The very same Greek word, episkopos, or in this case, episkopes. And look what he says, an overseer, episkopon, then must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, the exact same qualifications that were given of, a, of an elder. So what do we know so far? That a shepherd is an elder. An elder is an overseer. All three of these terms are used interchangeable. The English version of this shepherd is a pastor. So to come back and say that a pastor is only used once and there is no qualifications, or as the man in the intro said, there is no, uh, if you were to do an exhaustive study of a New Testament pastor, you wouldn't find any. Well, that's just not making any sense. It doesn't make sense that there be any qualifications for this office if the office was literally given, whether the office was carried forward or the office ended. You could not say that God gave an office without there being any sort of duties or qualifications or any sort of authority. Now, we do know, one, that the office of Episcopos, the office of an elder, overseer, pastor, that that was carried forward, which is why we see that after Ephesians, we see the qualifications given and how Paul inst instructs Timothy and Titus both to choose what he say faithful men. He says the, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. What is the qual one of the qualifications of an elder, of an overseer, of a pastor, of a shepherd teacher to teach, being able to teach, which is why those two, it's not a fifth office, a teacher is part of the fourth office that God has given uh, at that time an office of pastor teacher or shepherd teacher. You must be able to teach. And so what Paul is telling Timothy, pick faithful men, men who are faithful to the text, who are able to teach. In Acts 20, Paul is giving a farewell letter that he's writing to give instructions to elders. In verse 17 of chapter 20, he says, from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called to him the elders of the church 
And when they had come to him, he said to them. And so he's going to tell them what he says. And I want, I want to focus on all of this, but I want to go down to verse 28 so that you can see the importance of what we're stating here. He says, verse 26, let's start there. Therefore, I testify to you on this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. So he says, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock. And this word for flock is the word porneo, which is the same as the sheep. So the, so this, this flock of these followers, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. What word is this that's used of overseers? Episcopos. And so the Episcopos is the one that is to shepherd. How do we know so? He says the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd that same word again from the from the Greek noun, poimenos. In this case, it's the verb, poinanein, which is to shepherd the church. Incidentally, the word church is not even a word that's used in the Bible. It's the English version of the Greek word that means to assembly or congregation. And so because we don't see this word, the English term pastor used a lot, it doesn't matter because the actual word is a shepherd. And so what is a shepherd we're seeing? A shepherd is an overseer. A shepherd is a um, elder. And what are they to do? To shepherd the flock. Now, another thing that he mentioned is about the, the authority that is given to them. Well, we already saw what the authority is originally or earlier. But we also want to see where he says this again in 1 Timothy 5, 17. Notice what he says. The elder who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. What do the elders do? They rule well, especially those that rule well, you honor them. And this word for rule means to lead, to stand before them. And so what is the charge of the elder, the pastor? The authority given to him is he is supposed to lead. Now, can he force you to do anything? No. Obviously, he can't beat you. He, had, he didn't have the authority to hurt you or to punish you. But his job is to give you the word and to help to over to give oversight to the body as the body might offer some sort of church discipline. Now, they can't uh, dock your pay or fine or anything like that or whatever. But in terms of offering church discipline, they can do that. And their standard is high, even so much so that the Bible even tells us how we ought to entertain an accusation against them, not just on the basis of one person's word. No, the standard is a little bit higher. And if an accusation is to be leveled against them, it should be with two or three witnesses. And then the punishment for that elder, for that pastor, is even more stern than it is for an actual individual. Why? As Paul says, that people will know to fear God because of if, if they too are being disciplined, well, then what would happen to the actual sheep or the flock that's being shepherded? Why is it important that there be sound biblical pastors? Why does the Bible call for them? So that there will be men who would lead according to the will of God, according to his scriptures, people to go closer to God. And if they don't do their job according to the qualifications of that person, that pastor is to be removed, or you simply go and find a place where the shepherd is shepherding the flock of God biblically. So when someone tells you that pastor is only found once in the Bible, that's incorrect. If someone tells you that the pastor has no authority, that's incorrect. If the pastor tells you that the office of it is open to anyone, irrespective of the qualifications, that's clearly erroneous. That person might need to be either rejected or at least corrected. Amen. Hey